This video follows the data analysis section of the respiratory cycle lab procedures provided in lab. A PDF of these instructions can also be found in Canvas AMP2 lab resources. The first step in the data analysis portion of the instructions asks that you get a computer with the free BSL application already installed. This is the same software that was downloaded as part of the pre-lab. If you are unable to download the latest version of the BSL application onto your own computer, the computers in the lab cart, as well as the desktops in the upstairs South Hall computer lab, all have the application already installed. To open a Save Biopack file, you must first place your respiratory lab file on the computer you are working on. If your respiratory lab file was emailed to you, open your email and download the lab file you'll be analyzing. Do not try to open the attachment directly from your email, however. Biopack files can only be opened via the BSL application following the steps to come. If your respiratory lab file is on a USB drive, plug it into the computer, but do not try to open it from here yet. Now open the BSL application. In the window that opens, select Analyze Your Own Data at the top of the window, and then open a lesson data file for analysis at the bottom, and then click OK. In the next window that opens, select the location where the respiratory lab file was saved to or downloaded. If saved to a flash drive, locate the flash drive on the left side column and select the lab file. If using an MC computer, the flash drive will appear as the D drive. In this example, the lab file was downloaded from an email account. To locate the file, select the Downloads folder on the left side column and select the lab file. If you get to this point and see your file but are unable to select it, this is generally due to a change in the file extension done by the server. As is stated on page 14 of the instructions, to correct this issue, close out the BSL application and then open the folder your file is in. In this example, we open the Downloads folder and then right-click on the file name to rename the file, deleting the .dms extension that was put in. Make sure that your file ends with the dash capital L 08 extension, or Biopack will not recognize it as one of its files. The respiratory cycle lab file will then open with all of the respiratory lab experiments recorded in full view. As per the instructions, Take a moment to familiarize yourself with the screen and tools you'll be using. There are several black vertical lines running down the length of the respiratory recordings. These act as dividers, marking the beginning of the new experiment recorded. If you click on the black diamond or event marker at the top of the vertical line, it will turn red, indicating it is selected, and the top text box will change to indicate the name of that specific recording. In this case, we have selected the eupnea condition and everything to the right of this event marker represents the eupnea experiment. If you then click on the next event marker, you will see the hyperventilation condition labeled in the top text box, and everything to the right of this vertical line represents the hyperventilation experiment. Rather than click on these individual event markers, however, you may also move along these conditions using the right and left event arrows on the far right of the screen. If we click the right event arrow, for example, the next event marker turns red and hypoventilation is labeled in the top text box, followed by the cough and read aloud conditions. Now select the left event arrow and move all the way back to the left of the screen, returning to the eupnea condition. Now that you know how to identify each recording condition, select display on the top menu bar and then auto scale waveforms from the menu list. This will ensure the entire respiration recording strip is in clear view with none of the cycles cut off from view. Ignore the airflow temperature recording strip in red, as airflow temperature was never recorded. Now select the magnify tool on the far right of the screen and bring the magnifying glass cursor over the eupnea recording segment. From the far top left corner of the eupnea recording, hold down the left click of your mouse and drag a box over the entire segment. Be sure not to release the left click too soon, cutting off any of the respiratory cycles as shown. If this occurs, select Display from the top menu and then click Zoom Back. So once again, bring your magnifying glass cursor to the top left corner of the eupnea recording as shown, drag a box over the entire segment, and then release the left click near the next black vertical divider, which represents the next experiment. Once you release the left click, the portion that you highlighted will be zoomed into. To enhance the view of the eupnea recording, making it easier to see the waves, Again, click on Display on the top menu bar and then select Auto Scale Waveforms from the menu list. Now that you can clearly see the eupnea respiratory waveforms, select the I-beam tool beside the Magnify tool as shown. The I-beam tool will allow you to highlight portions of the recording and insert values into data tables. Bring your I-beam tool over the eupnea recording and hold down the left click 
to highlight the area of inspiration for one eupnea cycle, as shown. Inspiration begins at the bottom of a wave, which can be seen as its valley or base, and ends at the peak of that same wave. Release the left click, and with the inspiration area highlighted, move down to the bottom half of the screen to the journal section, making sure that journal is selected. Scroll down till table 8.1 is in view. For this table, you will measure the inspiration and expiration durations separately for three different respiratory cycles within the eupnea recording segment only. You will then calculate the mean and total durations, as well as measure the breathing rate of each of the three breathing cycles selected using the BSL application. You will also be completing the first row of table 8.3 in the journal section, being that it has a row for the eupnea condition. Now to insert the duration of inspiration for cycle one in table 8.1, Bring your cursor over the appropriate column and row, as shown, and right-click in the table. Be sure not to right-click outside of the table, for you will not see the correct menu. From the menu that appears, you will want to select Insert Single Measurement Value. In the BSL window that opens, you must then select the appropriate measurement value to insert. This is shown at the top or side of each table, as shown. For Table 8.1, you are selecting Channel 40 Delta T for the first two rows which is the pre-selected first option. The duration of inspiration for the highlighted cycle will then appear in the column and row selected. Now highlight the area of expiration for the same respiratory cycle by bringing the I-beam tool to the peak of the wave where inspiration ended. Hold down the left click and highlight until the I-beam reaches the next valley or base of the wave, as shown. Enter the duration of expiration in the same manner by right-clicking the appropriate column and row for cycle one selecting Insert Single Measurement Value from the menu list, and then Channel 40 Delta T. In order to calculate the total duration for Cycle 1, right-click in the appropriate column and row, and select Column Statistics from the menu list, and then Sum from the side menu that appears. Now to complete Cycle 1, you must measure the breathing rate of the respiratory cycle selected. Bring your I-beam tool back to the beginning of inspiration for the cycle you've been measuring and highlight the entire respiratory cycle from valley to valley or base to base of the wave. This highlight includes the area of both inspiration and expiration. Right click in the last row of the cycle one column and select insert single measurement value from the menu and then channel 40 BPM for breaths per minute. With the entire respiratory cycle still highlighted, now scroll down in the journal section to table 8.3. The first row of table 8.3 measures the depth of breath for three cycles of the eupnea recording. Enter the depth of breath for cycle one for eupnea by right clicking, selecting insert single measurement value, and then channel 40 P to P from the menu list, as is indicated at the top of the table. With the eupnea cycle one column complete for both table 8.1 and table 8.3, now repeat the same steps to complete cycles two and three of the eupnea condition for both tables.
Once all three cycles for the UPNI recording have been measured, calculate the mean values by right-clicking in each row of the mean column, selecting Row Statistics from the menu, and then Mean from the submenu that appears. Be careful not to accidentally select Column Statistics as the submenu is identical. Once Table 8.1 is complete, scroll down in the Journal section to Table 8.2. Select Display from the top menu bar and then zoom back from the menu list. Select the right event arrow and ensure that hyperventilation is listed in the top text box so that you correctly identify and highlight the next recording. Using your Magnify tool, drag a box over the entire hyperventilation segment being sure not to cut any of the waveforms from view, as shown. Select Display from the top menu and click Auto Scale Waveforms to ensure you have the best view of the waveforms possible. If the experiment was recorded correctly, the first 30 seconds of the hyperventilation recording is when the subject was hyperventilating, and the last 30 seconds is when they were returning to normal breathing. If necessary, you may zoom in further to the hyperventilation portion by dragging a smaller box over the beginning half of the hyperventilation recording and again, auto-scaling the waveforms. Once you are happy with your zoom and can clearly make out the waveforms, select your I-beam tool and highlight one respiratory cycle from valley to valley as shown. Now bring your cursor to table 8.2. This table is divided into two halves. The half on the left measures the duration of breaths in seconds. The half on the right measures the breathing rate in breaths per minute. Begin by right-clicking in the appropriate column and row of the left side table. Select Insert Single Measurement Value from the menu list and then Channel 40 Delta T, as is indicated at the top of that table. This will insert the duration of the respiratory cycle you highlighted. In order to insert the same cycle's breathing rate, now bring your cursor to the second half of table 8.2 and in the appropriate column and row, again select Insert Single Measurement Value and then channel 40 BPM from the menu list, as is indicated at the top of this table, as shown. With the same respiratory cycle still highlighted, now scroll down to table 8.3 and enter the depth of breath by right-clicking in the appropriate row and column, selecting insert single measurement value, and then channel 40 P to P from the window that appears. You have now inserted the duration, breathing rate, and depth of one highlighted hyperventilation cycle into three different tables. Repeat the same steps for hyperventilation cycles two and three in both halves of table 8.2 and in table 8.3. Once the hyperventilation row is complete in tables 8.2 and 8.3, select Display from the top menu bar and then zoom back. Select the next event arrow and ensure that hypoventilation is listed in the top text box. Using the Magnify tool, again drag a box over the entire hypoventilation segment of the recording and repeat the same steps as previously done to complete the appropriate rows in tables 8.2 and 8.3. Remember that similar to hyperventilation, the first 30 seconds of hypoventilation represents when the subject was hypoventilating and the last 30 seconds is their return to normal breathing.
Once all hypoventilation rows are complete in tables 8.2 and 8.3, zoom back to the full screen view and then magnify the cough and reading aloud segment of the recording as shown. Only one measurement is required for the cough condition in both halves of table 8.2, as well as in table 8.3, even though some of the columns may not be shaded in. The cough should be located at the beginning of the recording where a sudden high peak and quick drop in the waveform should be visible. Using the eye beam tool, highlight the cough from valley to valley as shown and insert measurements into table 8.2 and 8.3 as previously done. The reading aloud condition follows immediately after the cough recording and should look like a series of high peaks that steadily decline until the next breath is taken. Using the eye beam tool, highlight from the valley just before one peak until the next valley just before the next peak, as shown. This represents one breath taken as the subject was reading aloud. Insert measurements for duration and breathing rate into both halves of table 8.2 as previously done. Note that there is no row in Table 8.3 for this condition. Once all the data tables are complete, you can transfer all remaining values by hand to the respiratory cycle post-lab data tables in your must notebook. Do not answer the electronic version of the post-lab questions in the BSL application, as these questions have been modified. If your instructor wants copies of your data tables for a lab report, you can highlight the data tables in the journal section of the application, and then copy and paste them into either a Word or Excel document. Confirm with your instructor how they would like data presented if a lab report is required. When you are ready to save your data and close out the application, first select Display from the top menu bar and then click Zoom Back until you have returned to the full screen view as shown. Once here, select File from the top menu and then Save As. In the window that opens, select the same location from which you open the lesson file. This likely will either be the Downloads folder or a flash drive. In this example, we will select the Downloads folder to save to. A BSL window should then appear asking if you would like to overwrite the existing file. Click Replace. If this window does not appear, then you did not select the same location from which you opened to save to, and you should repeat the saving steps to avoid any confusion as to which file has the completed data analysis. If working on your own computer, you may elect to move the saved file to a specific folder or to the desktop to prevent accidental deletion. Just remember that if you wish to reopen this saved file, you must do so through the BSL application, following the same steps previously shown. You are now ready to exit out of the application. To do so, select BSL Analysis from the top menu, and then select Quit BSL Analysis.